Big thanks to Master Build for sponsoring this video. Cooking on your barbecue, it's your favorite thing to do. You cook brisket, you've cooked ribs, you did everything you thought you could do on your barbecue. It's not true. I'm here to tell you, I'm sorry. <coughs> yes, and I think you know where this is going. A Dutch oven recipe. In this case, it's not just a recipe. It involves apples. <laughs> because it is apple season. Two is not a problem, but then you have to go three. See, and that's where I don't want to ruin any more apples. Three is a problem. Let's start by peeling the apples, cutting them in half, getting rid of the core, and that is an important step, and then chopping these up into little cubes. This is about seven apples, and these apples are gonna be on my barbecue. So we're not gonna cook any meat today. What? I thought I'd just put it out there. For all the carnivores, I'm sorry, I do apologize. Today is dessert day. How can I make this video right with you? I'm sorry, I apologize, no meat, but it's gonna be very, very tasty. It's gonna be crazy delicious. So hang in there. I'm gonna take half a cup of raisins, add some water to it until they're fully submerged. And then I'm gonna let these soak for about an hour. And through the miracle of time, we have some soaked raisins. What? How? Don't film my other. It's magic, TV magic. I think this is more like a cup, but we need about half a cup. The idea here is that we're gonna make like a men's style apple pie. What I don't want is to have like an exact recipe for you that scares you. This is easy. If you hold your hands like this, just look at the amount of raisins that are in there. That is not too much raisins, it's just a little bit. You gotta feel this recipe. And if you don't like raisins, don't put any raisins in. That's the idea. Okay. The dog looks extremely worried that there's no beef around. Extremely worried. Let's chop these nuts. This is about 70 grams of pecan nuts. And again, just want you to add a few of these. Now the base of the stuffing is done and I wanna add a little bit more flavor to it. So I'm gonna add two teaspoons of cinnamon. And if you have apples that are sour, you wanna sweeten them up. If they're not sour, you still wanna sweeten them up, but less. In my case, they're super sweet. So I'm gonna just add two tablespoons. Now, because I'm secretly a pirate, I'm gonna add some rum. Arr. All right, let's not go there. It's still a little bit early in the morning. And then to bring some brightness to the dish, I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon zest. And I'm gonna use the zest of the whole lemon. That's how much I want in. I want it to speak to me when I'm eating it. We have all these flavors, but if we wanna make the flavor speak, we need to add a little bit of salt. And I'm just talking about a pinch. I don't wanna be able to taste the salt, but I want the salt to boost the flavors that are in here. It doesn't need to be salty, but it, the salt needs to empower everything that's right here. When making cobbler, you're going to need to make a dough. So let's take 500 grams of all-purpose flour. And how do you know you have 500 grams without measuring? Just get a pack of 500 grams or take half of a kilo pack. Then in goes a whole pack of butter, 300 grams of sugar, one egg, and two packs of vanilla sugar. That's exactly 16 grams. So now it's time to stick your hands in and get to work. Mix it all up and yes, you've got to use your hands. And then you end up with this structure. If I squeeze this, I would have a dough like that. But I don't want a dough, I want to crumble. And crumble means I gotta crumble the cookie. And these are absolutely perfect. You see the egg makes everything nice and yellow. That's gonna give it a little bit of shine later on. In the Netherlands, we got something called a Limburgse fly. And most of the time this is on top with a little bit of pudding in between. Whoa, that's so good. I got a recipe. I could make it. There it is. This is my cobbler pan. Well, actually it's an ordinary cast iron pan, but it's the perfect shape to make my cobbler. It is shallow, which I need because it's like a baking tray. I love cast iron for baking in barbecues because it just retains the heat so well and everything cooks nice and slowly. Even if you have an uneven heat source, this is gonna be absolutely perfect for it. If you're looking for one of these, it's a Scottsburg cast iron pan. The link's down below in the video description. Do pick one up or visit their website if you are looking for one. You think we might have had enough butter and sugar, but we didn't have enough butter and sugar yet because I wanna line the pan with a little bit of butter just to prevent 
anything from sticking to the sides. Scrape the sides a little bit. There we go. Oh yeah, apple crumble. I'm not necessarily saying you should eat the whole thing by yourself, even though it's healthy because there's a lot of apples in it. There's also a lot of butter and sugar. So let's spread this out a little bit and then the crumble goes on. Make sure that you just shake it on. So everything has a loose structure. See how beautiful that becomes? That is going to be one good looking cobbler with crumble on top. This is now ready to go on the barbecue. So let's fire up the master build smoker. First thing that I'm going to do is load the hopper up with charcoal. Of course, I'm using master builds lump charcoal. Then I'm going to shake the tray and I'm going to get rid of the ashes from the tray. That way I will have a little bit of smoke flavor from the charcoal, which is absolutely perfect, but I'm not over smoking my apple cobbler. I'm going to stick in a couple of fire starters and then light them up. Now let's start it up and set the temperature to 180 degrees Celsius. And the whole recipe that I just explained to you is of course in the metric system on our website, but it's also in the ounces and pounds and all that stuff. The other stuff. We're going to set it to 180 degrees Celsius. Confirm. And now you have the animation in Fahrenheit. Just for you, my friend. Come on, make my apple cobbler. You will not be sorry. Like if everybody would like this recipe, comment it and share it and it will become a big hit and you want to see it, we can make more desserts. All you have to do is like, share, make sure that this video becomes extremely popular. That's all you need to do. I'm depending on you. With five minutes to spare on my timer, I decided to check in on the cobbler and <laughs> look at it. That is absolutely perfect. This is the perfect crust. We got that crunchy top. Look, if I press on one of these crunchy bits, you see that? The whole thing just poop, poop, poop. You can hear the bubbling of the apple sitting underneath. But now sadly, I didn't get to show you my trick because sometimes if you have a barbecue and it doesn't have that rotating air like the master build, then you have to apply a little trick. And the trick is to put the lid of the Scotsburg pan on and there are little round ledges on top of that lid and you place some charcoal from the ashtray on top of the lid Heat up the lid and then it will radiate down onto the crumble and make it absolutely freaking crispy and delicious. Time to take a look at our apple cobbler. What does it look like underneath that crust? There we go. Oh, big fat scoop. That is one tasty juicy looking apple cobbler. Let's plate it up. Maybe a little bit more of that stuffing. If you're eating apple cobbler, you might want to invest in some ice cream. I got some lemon merengue right here. If you want to go all in, a little bit of whipped cream. And to make it impressive, some mint leaves. There we go. The perfect apple cobbler straight from the cast iron pan out of the barbecue. <laughs> this tastes so good. If you make this as a dessert with your whole barbecue thing, wow, you're going to win some hearts and minds. What's next? What are we going to do? 